Peace be with you. Friends, our gospel for today is St. Luke's version of the Lord's Prayer, the Our Father. When you pray, he says, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Father. Let's pause right there. I mean, God could be addressed as you know, Lord, Master, all-powerful, etc. All those, all those are true designations. That we're invited to call him Father. It's suggested by some scholars that you know behind that is the is the diminutive, the Hebrew Abba, more like like Daddy. But yet he's giving us the privilege to enter into that kind of intimacy with God. Don't don't brush over that word when you start the Our Father. That you're able to say Our Father in addressing the Creator of the universe, in addressing the the infinite source of existence itself, we're able to say Father because we share in Christ's own intimacy. First thing we ask him, hallowed be thy name. Now, may your name be held holy. It's not as though our prayer is making his name holy. We're not praying for that. As though we have the power to do that. I mean, God's name is always holy. What we're asking for is that we always hallow the name of God. Now, to hallow, to to hold as holy, that means as set apart. May your kingdom come. That's the heart of Jesus preaching, right? When he first appears in the hills of Galilee, what's on his lips is the message of the kingdom. The kingdom of God is at hand, so repent and believe the good news. The kingdom, the kingdom, what is it? I always follow Origen here, the great church father. So when we say, may your kingdom come, we're saying, May we be drawn more and more completely into the power of Jesus. Give us each day our daily bread. Now, it sounds rather ordinary, but why do I say mysterious? Are we praying just for ordinary sustenance? No, it seems to me. That would be ordinary bread. You know, Lord, help us to have enough to live on. Okay, okay. But we're not asking for that. We're asking for the panem super substantialem the super substantial bread. Catholics begin to hear an overtone, don't we? What's the Eucharist? Not ordinary bread, but bread that has been transubstantiated into the body and blood of Christ. No longer ordinary bread, but now the body and blood of Christ under the appearances of bread and wine. The super substantial bread for which we pray every time we pray the Lord's Prayer is precisely Christ in his Eucharistic form. See, we pray-